I think the t-shirt says it all. New report underscores need to electrify ride hailing fleets. Let's read up about that. What are they up to now? So electrifying ride hailing fleets could work to reduce emissions significantly while keeping costs low. Um, drivers for ride hailing such as Uber and Lyft vehicles uh, put a lot of miles on their vehicles and it stands to reason that they have larger carbon footprints than personal vehicles. The good news is that electrifying ride share vehicles could deliver far greater emission reductions than electrifying personal passenger cars. Uh, the Rocky Mountain Institute RMI in collaboration with General Motors recently released um, an insight brief that explains why the electrification of transportation network companies, TNCs, is crucial to accelerating the transition to EVs. The new report, Racing to Accelerate Electric Vehicle Adoption, Decarbonizing Transportation with Ride Hailing, lever leverages 101 million miles of real-world data from GM to show that electric ride hailing vehicles can not only effectively replace ICE vehicles, ICE vehicles, but will also create catalytic opportunities for the electrification of other transportation sectors by overcoming barriers facing consumers and fleets. So you have that chart there. Total operating time, EV 7 hours and 14 minutes. ICE vehicles, 7 hour 20 minutes. Average daily distance, EVs 152.7. ICE vehicles, uh, 161.9. Average daily downtime including overnight stops, EVs 7 hours, ICE vehicles 6 hours 37 minutes. The brief um, identifies three key barriers to electrifying ride hailing vehicles, uh, technological capability, financial competitiveness, and charging infrastructure, and suggests strategies for overcoming these obstacles. Electrifying TNCs has significant direct environmental benefits um, and an Equally critical benefit uh, for the larger market that comes from the public charging infrastructure and consumer exposure to EVs, um, said McCook, principal at RMI. Urgent and collaborative action from key stakeholders is needed to drive to a climate-aligned goal of deploying over 50 million electric vehicles in the next 10 years, said RMI Managing Director Britta Gross. Ride-hailing can be that sector that drives widespread EV awareness and moves the market toward an electrification tipping point that is irreversible. So I want to add to that that Uber and Lyft's incentive to switch to EVs or hybrids is only between $0.50 cents and $1.50 per ride. That's just not enough incentive for these people to switch. They have to make, they have to make it more attractive. That's my opinion here to the drivers if they want to reach these 50 million vehicles. Really, I mean, the incentive is, hey, I'm going to be earning a decent amount, three, four dollars extra per trip, 50 cents or one dollar fifty doesn't get me anywhere. That's just my opinion here. Please feel to feel free to chime in. Um, huge shout out to my sponsor, <clears throat> Kova, K-O-V-E-R. Protection plans start at $7 a month. All the benefits and perks you need in one membership. You've got your car insurance, you've got your health insurance, and you go and get yourself a gig protection plan, right? Pay time off, sick leave, 24-7 health service, automatic mileage tracking. If any of these companies wrongfully terminate you or deactivate you, in kicks the legal protection from legal ride share. The letters go out, the legal letters go out to get you back in the game. Because if you get deactivated over a wrongful rider report, from the time you get deactivated, let's say, then providing the proof and getting back on the road, I mean, weeks can go by. You could easily lose a few thousand dollars, right? So you want to get immediate reinstatement uh, by COVA. Now, um, please feel free to comment on that article. I'd love to hear your f feedback and definitely allergic to that. So keep it real, my friends.